Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and in this video we are going to talk about track to bone constraint. Now this bone constraint is kind of similar like damp track bone constraint but it offers more control than damp track bone constraint so let's get started. I'm just going to add two bones in the scene now. There you go and let's also go into the armature, turn on the names and axis. Let's make the axis go 0.5 and let's go into the pose mode. Now let's also go into the wireframe mode. Now you can see the local axis of the bone. So this uh, axis, they are actually uh, representing the local axis of each individual bone, which is necessary to use this constraint. Select that bone and let's go to the constraint properties and then add track to bone constraint. Now this bone constraint make your constraint bone to track towards your target bone or your target object. So it can be any other object as well, a mesh object as well or an empty. So it doesn't matter. So I'll just select my armature and then let's select our bone. And if you have noticed, as soon as the constraint turned on, this axis got rotated. And the reason why is that the tracking axis. So it is right now set to negative Z. If I set it to positive X, you'll see that my positive X is right now pointing towards my target bone. And if I select the Y, actually, if I select the Y, the constraint will break because my tracking axis and my up axis cannot be same. So yeah, do keep that in mind. Uh, if I set it to Z, now my Z is pointing towards the target bone. So I'll keep it pointing in the Z direction like that. And now let's go ahead and try to move our bone. So as you can see, if I move my bone, the local Z of my constrained bone always uh, points towards the target bone and that's good. I can also rotate it like this. So basically you can move around your constrained bone anywhere uh, around this, this bone if that is the effect you want. You can also move your target bone. You can also move your target bone around if you want. Now let's go ahead and check other settings. So my up axis, it is the axis of my constrained bone that will point upwards. So right now my Y is pointing up. Now if I set it to X, my X axis suddenly starts to point in the up direction. And this will give some different results than before. So I'll keep the Y at the up direction like this. Now let's talk about the Z target. So now target Z, what it will do is it will the up axis right now. We are using this right. So if I check the target Z, it will override this up axis. Uh, well, kind of not. It will kind of add on top of it. Uh, so if I select the tracking, uh, you know what? Let's just keep it at Y so that we don't get confused now. Uh, so target Z, if I check that, it will use my target objects Z or you can say uh, Z, local Z axis uh, as its up, upward direction. So right now it is setting the mesh uh, like the bone to go uh, infinitely small scaled. So if I just move this bone around, you'll see that it is not scaled down anymore and it is looking towards my target bone again. And now I can move around my target bone. Um, so let me just reset everything and as you can see it is working nicely and the reason why it is flipping let me just disable the target Z okay uh, and now as you can see that whenever I rotate it flips the bone itself so what this is doing is as soon as it reaches this point my Y has to be pointing upwards but if it moves beyond this my Y will point downwards and to prevent that, it flips the bone itself and then my Y starts pointing upwards like this. So there will be a flipping if you pass towards the origin of the armature uh, in the world space. That's how it works. Now, if I set my target Z true, uh, and there is also one more thing that I forgot to show you all. And now if I change the target bone, you'll see that just uh, because my up axis, the Z axis of my bone, is changing the rotation of my bone is also changing so as you know that my y is up so like my constraint bones y should be pointing upwards and as i have checked my target z so this z axis is pointing up that's why my y is also pointing up now so with the help of target z you can have custom up axis which is which can be handy in few cases uh, when you need it so yeah that how that works now let me just reset everything 
okay now uh, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, change some coordinates over there so let me take this bone and if i rotate it you can see that it is rotating and looking towards my target bone and also there is one more thing uh, if you wonder what uh, head and tail is so right now my bone it is looking towards the head like it is tracking towards the head of my target bone uh, because it is zero right now as you can see and if i make it uh, one then it will track towards the tail of the bone as you can see okay it is not tracking towards head anymore uh, and if i make it 0.5 then it will track towards the center of the bone and not just tail or head so it is tracking towards the center of the bone which can be handy uh, depending upon what your case is so to understand this constraint i'm just going to keep the head at zero uh, and now let's uh, play with this target spaces the target space uh, what it does is for the owner if you set it to local space um, then there is actually an offset between the origin point of the armature and this bone itself so locally the origin of this bone is over here where its head is now what will happen is as soon as i move this bone or you know what better if i move it in this axis okay so as soon as i move it you'll see that it is tracking on this point over there so it actually added the offset by itself uh, in the local space so from here to here in the y direction it uh, in the background it adds uh, two units with whatever the length is and now it is tracking in over there now you can make the target to local space as well and you might not see the difference so yeah targets local space now this might affect the target z uh, but i think i'll leave that you uh, i'll leave it to you guys to experiment with it because just watching tutorial is good but following the tutorial after watching it is also a good practice and also like the more you experiment with this coordinate uh, spaces the more you understand them so it doesn't matter how much i explain them i don't think that uh, unless and until you try it you won't get it so yeah so local space works like that and the target space now if i set both of them to local space uh, they will be behave differently for different cases now i i really like to keep this constraint in the world space uh, and this in world space as well but totally depends on your preference so i guess that's how track to constraint works and the influence slider uh, if you have watched my previous video you might get annoyed but this uh, slider a, it acts as a on and off switch for this constraint and if you have multiple constraints stacked in this uh, section then you can use this constraint as a weight a value so if it is 0.5 then the constraint will only work 50 percent like it won't give it 100 at all okay so this is the 100 and this is the 50 and this is the like one percent so if you want that you can use it so that's how you use track to bone constraint now i am talking about all of this bone constraint in their own separate videos because making a huge five hours video talking about all of this constraint would not only be boring but would be tedious for you guys to watch they are in as small videos as possible um so yeah do check it out on my youtube channel the playlist link will be in the description below i also have discord server so if you have any doubts uh, get over there ask your doubts that link will be also in description below uh, and yeah if you want to support me all you have to do for free is to subscribe to my channel like this video and share it with your friends or you could go beyond and become a Kofi supporter link will be also in description below and i hope you all learned something new from this video and this video helps in your future projects hope you all enjoyed it so yeah thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye